Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Good, good evening, Mr. Rickerman. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Present. Mr. Vaughn? Mr. Davis? Yeah. Mayor Benjamin? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Red Medell, you mind blessing us with a, with a word of prayer? Yes. Let us pray. Oh Lord, in the midst of this busy day and this busy time, you've allowed us to gather as a family. You've allowed us to gather as communities enjoined to each other. We simply ask that you might sensitize us to your will and to your way. Allow us to feel your presence. Particularly, we pray for children everywhere, for families everywhere. Particularly when there's crisis in our nation, we pray for peace and development. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 Would you all join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance. Thank you. Mayor Benjamin, at this time, if you would uh, bear with me for several uh, changes and additions, amendments to our agenda yeah. um, prior to its adoption. Um, one that I would say first at Reverend McDowell's uh, request as well, so I know we have several uh, folks here for the item, withdrawing item 32 as requested by the applicant. This is the zoning map amendment for 1400 Hugh G Street. And making it clear, the, the request for rezoning has been withdrawn. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. As requested by the applicant. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's go okay. Let's go the rest, uh, the rest of the amendments, please. Additionally, we would be removing item 10 from the consent agenda. We're going to amend item 13 to read, council is asked to approve an agreement for Park Street streetscape and trash storage options versus enclosure services, as requested by Columbia Water, the award to Chow and Associates um, in the amount of $110,610. We will be deferring consideration of item 17, which was um, a, a resolution regarding the operation of Soda City relocation from the 1400 block to the 1600 block of Main Street. We um, are withdrawing item 25, and it's really more of an amendment to item 25. The item 25 was always intended to be a restatement of your health care related item from last meeting that got first reading. It's the actual health care motion, which now reads item 26. We'll be deferring item 31, which is the fiscal year 2018-2019 accommodations and hospitality tax grant funding recommendations. All right, uh, um, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? We'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Um, All right, so let the record reflect we've complied with the Freedom of Information Act. Yes, sir. Uh, removing certain items and, and adding by more than two-thirds vote. For those of you who are here for the rezoning, it has been formally withdrawn. So no mass exodus right yet. <laughs> yeah. thank, 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 thank you, Councilman, uh, for his leadership. All right. All right. All right. All right, let's, um, let's keep on moving. Yes, sir. Uh, we would ask for any public input related to the agenda items as they were outlined. If there are none, we would ask for council. Uh, we'll go ahead and deal with the consent agenda. I'll come back to item 10. 11. Consent agenda items 11 through 16. So moved. Is there a second? Is there discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Aye. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. 
Item 10, Council is asked to approve an agreement for preliminary engineering services for the Gervais Street Bridge Painting Project award to Norfolk Southern Railway Company in the amount of, of $12,000. The firm is located in Columbia. All right. All right. Uh, let's move approval. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? We'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Uh, Mayor Benjamin? No. Uh, <laughs> my vote was no. Did you? Huh? Yeah. Did you get it? Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Well, Ms. Devine already voted for you, so it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, please. One okay. one, no. Thank you. I will move into a period of presentations. Item 18 is the June 2018 Employee of the Month, Mr. Well, I know Chief is not here. Is it Deputy Chief Kelly? Yeah. Um, okay, Deputy Chief Melron Kelly with the Columbia Police Department will present Mr. Jeffrey Brink, Columbia Police Sergeant at the North Region. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Good evening, Chief. I would like to present our June Employee of the Month, uh, Sergeant Jeffrey Brink. Jeffrey is a sergeant over in the North Region, which is District 1 area. He is a 10-year veteran of the Columbia Police Department. Uh, he came to us by way of the Kalamazoo area of Michigan, uh, moved here after college at Western Michigan State, and he's been here ever since. Uh, he's a dedicated employee, a uh, frequent community participant in our many activities, including driving the ice cream truck. Jeffrey's been married to his wife, Christian, and they have two daughters, Addison and Sydney, who are seated here in the, in the audience. He's a valued uh, City of Columbia employee and team member. And I just want to take this uh, opportunity to thank him publicly and show him our appreciation. Thank you. Um, I think I'm up next, actually. I want to do a little bit of a teaser. I think majority of council knows, but we wanted to make sure that a contingency of staff and some helpers are headed to Denver for our All-America City Award competition presentation. The City of Columbia, we applied for this. We had no idea how involved it was actually going to become, but it's a wonderful thing. We've been named a finalist out of 20 cities across this country. The city of Columbia is an All-America City finalist. And so we are. We're very, very excited about the opportunity. The All-America City Awards process is the flagship program of the National Civic League. The theme this year is promoting equity through inclusive civic engagement. And on Wednesday, March 21st, 2018, the National Civic League proudly announced the City of Columbia as one of the top 20 All-America City finalists. 
Finalists were selected through an application process that highlighted various city projects and community-based initiatives. Each finalist represents the diversity of American communities from the largest cities to the smallest towns from east to west and north to south. On Thursday, June 21st through Sunday, June 24th, a delegation from the City of Columbia will be traveling to Denver, Colorado to participate in a live presentation. The presentation will determine whether the City of Columbia will become an All-America City winner. The All-America City Awards were established in 1949 and Columbia was a winner in 1951 and 1964. So it's time that we bring it back again. And our public relations team will be promoting Columbia by posting on all of the city's social media platforms using the hashtag AAC2018. They will tag the National Civic League and we are asking our city leaders and our citizens to like and share these posts to help build momentum for our city. All America City finalist status speaks volumes about our diverse entrepreneurial and community focused city. Columbia epitomizes the characteristics of a city that emphasizes civic engagement and we are so honored to be recognized and excited to, I think, participate in this um, very interesting live presentation that our staff and some <laughs> folks that are helping us have put together. We hope to come back because we can't give it away beforehand and share with you all the presentation upon our return. So we wish us safe travels and hopefully we'll bring back the All-America City Award. Let's bring, it, let's bring it home. Let's bring it home. I, I will say, uh, Teresa, you and your staff, this process is rigorous, y'all. <laughs> I had no idea how rigorous it, it, it was and, until um, they made it start working. Right. Uh, and um, uh, Ashley and everyone else on the team have done a really fantastic yeah. job. So we're really looking forward has. to, to, to bring it home. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. Want, right. know it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Miss UC would like you all to take a photo with the All America City uh, poster. Can we do it before we leave? Can they do it before they uh, leave? When we, when we get back up, or don't forget, you know, Miss UC will get you. <laughs> go anywhere. You know, we will. We will do it. We will do it. So we can. We can. Uh, we can include it in the packet. In the packet. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I do. I do want to um, also. Are you done with the All America? Yes, sir. Oh, I want to recognize Taylor Wright. I can't see Taylor. Are you? Can you stand up, son? Stand up for a second. Uh, he's a student body president at the University of South Carolina. Awesome. And, um, <laughs> uh, he's here. He's a, a pre med superstar, uh, doing great things on campus, and um, uh, he's looking forward to making sure we have continued great dialogue, not just between the university and the city, but also. Uh, the student leadership there. Um, um, so, want to recognize his presence here. Welcome, Taylor. All right. Our next item is the Parks and Recreation Month proclamation. The Honorable Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin. No, thank you. Um, no, it's a um, pleasure to recognize this as um, Parks and Recreation Month. Um, whereas Parks and Recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including Columbia. And whereas our parks and recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region, and whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities uh, that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally and physically disabled, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens, and whereas parks and recreation programs increase the community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction, and whereas parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, and whereas parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development and produce habitat for wildlife, and whereas our parks and recreation uh, areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors. And whereas the United States House of Representatives has just designated July as Parks and Rec Month, and the City of Columbia recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources, I, Stephen Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, along with the, my fellow members of City Council, do hereby proclaim July as Parks and Recreation uh, Month. We recognize, obviously, the beautiful sylvan environments and built environments that make up our parks and rec, but more importantly, the men and women who, um, who make uh, our parks and recs uh, uh, a special place for our children and our adults to, to, um, uh, to prosper in. So 
when we take this picture, then we'll also take Miss Utsi's picture. How about that? Uh, Randy, you, you had a word, brother? Randy Davis, our director of Parks and Recreation. Randy. All right, all right. I just want to uh, take this opportunity to thank City Council, the mayor, and city manager for your continued support for what we do in Parks and Recreation. Thank you so much. Cedar right. Terrace. All right, Cedar Terrace. Let's, 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 let's get a two for the picture, y'all. Uh, it's just for tag. The tag is too much all right all right We're making some progress let's keep it moving all right mr mayor okay. I'm city manager. yes sir we Mr. are L. L. at the introduction of miss charlene slaughter as the new director of communications bill mr ellen. Bill, bill ellen ellen bill ellen sounds familiar who's yeah. bill ellen the president <laughs> and ceo of experience columbia sc hey, bill. who i spent the morning with they had a great I'll move, I'll move the morning. microphone. You might want to pull the microphone back up. Hey, brother. How you, man? Hi. Hey, uh, Mr. Mayor and all members of council, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, first, I want to thank the City of Columbia and Chief Jenkins for all your support and help last week as we hosted the State Firefighters Convention in Columbia at the Convention Center. We had over 2,000 firefighters. Uh, first time in Columbia. They've been in Myrtle Beach for over 40 years. So they're in Columbia, and we're negotiating with them for a contract for the next three years. So it was a great event, and thank you for all your help. Awesome. It was a great awesome. event. And now I'm here to, um, to welcome and present to you our new Director of Communications, Ms. Charlene Slaughter. And before Kelly uh, officially introduces uh, Charlene, she's going to give you a little update on what we, we're doing from a marketing standpoint to market the city as a destination. And then Charlene's going to say a few words about how busy she's been. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. As you know, we've been marketing Columbia through our billboards, which have all of our new branding on them. Um, we have those in Charlotte and Augusta and Greenville and Charleston, all 
the routes leading into Columbia. We're also almost 80,000 Facebook fans on, on uh, in social media and almost 20,000 on Instagram. So really growing our marketing all across the board. We're doing, we've done projects with Garden and Gun, Southern Living, the local palette, um, and we've hosted travel influencers um, from around the world here in Columbia um, recently. So lots going on. But one of the main areas of focus that uh, we're really proud of right now is our communications and media relations. And we have had Charlene on board for about three months now, and she's going to tell you a little bit about what she's working on in terms of earned media and media relations. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Charlene Slaughter again. Um, no stranger to South Carolina. I'm a proud South Carolinian. Born, raised, educated, and still live in my grandparents' uh, house I renovated. So <laughs> I'm uh, no stranger to this area. Uh, spent the first 10 years of my career as a print journalist, the next 10 in higher education, marketing, and, and PR at Claflin University, and most recently, Darlamore School of Business. Uh, I like to cut cap it at 20 years, so we'll just stop there. <laughs> uh, my job at Experience Columbia SC centers around uh, telling the Columbia story uh, through earned media. Uh, we do that in a number of ways, but uh, a few of those is by hosting travel writers nationally and internationally. Uh, we just had an international writer here from the Netherlands last week. Uh, we also do media immersion trips where we go to markets where uh, we may not be as known or where we may not have contact with certain, certain writers like New York, not like Atlanta, to make those connections, to tell Columbia's story and get them interested in writing about us and that earned media piece that Kelly mentioned. I wanted to mention just a few things. Uh, we're proud of the growing amount of national coverage that we're getting from publications like The Thrillist, from National Geographic, Southern Living, Smithsonian Magazine, Garden and Gun, Food and Wine, Cosmopolitan, the list goes on and on. Uh, we've garnered headlines like, you know, American travel destinations that are about to blow up and the best small cities in the United States, you know, Columbia, state of the art uh, destination. Uh, the best, the five best, most affordable places to travel, where we were mentioned alongside places like Aruba and Shanghai, China. <laughs> uh, you know, Columbia, uh, Columbia's Congaree National Park was uh, deemed the best place in North, North America to see synchronized flies. Not in the South, not in the <laughs> South, in North America. And if you pick up your July edition of Family Circle, you'll see uh, one of our festivals, our Love, Peace, and Hip Hop Festival, that's listed as one of the best uh, family festivals in each, each state. So uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's an exciting time to represent Columbia in this capacity. Uh, we're certainly here as a resource for you all. For example, I don't know if you heard, Mayor Benjamin was on CBS this morning recently, and we got a call from them, them saying we need photos from the destination and that type thing. So we're certainly here as a resource to provide uh, anything that you need related to media relations, communications, uh, in, in terms of travel and tourism. So uh, feel free to reach out, and uh, we look forward to continuing to taking Columbia uh, to higher heights on a national and international level. Thank you. Nice to Thank meet you. you. Welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. You. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Duval. Uh, Charlene, last year Kelly was able to get the total eclipse in August, and I'm hoping you're going to be able to get it back I, this time. I'm working on it. <laughs> it was a good job. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. All right. I'm city manager. You're looking at Erica's grandbaby on the phone. He's so cute. Okay, we are at our budget ordinances second reading. Item 22, ordinance number 2018-026 to raise the revenue and adopt the budget for the City of Columbia, South Carolina. Is there a motion? So move. Second. It, it's moved and seconded. Discussion. Seeing none, we move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Thank you. Ordinance number 2018-027, amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the City of Columbia, South Carolina, Chapter 23, Utilities and Engineering, Article 5, Water and Sewer Rates, Section 23-143, Water Service Rates, and Section 23-149, Sewer Service Rates. Motion. Move approval. Second. Yes. Move and second. Discussion. 
Seeing none, move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vaughn? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 24, ordinance number 2018-025, amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the City of Columbia, South Carolina, Chapter 15, Parks and Recreation, Section 15.5, User Fees A, Definitions 3, D Parks, 3, Enzer Keenan House, 4, Earlwood Community Building, and 5, Eau Claire Print Building, I Athletics, B. The motion. <laughs> Move approval. The second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 26, Mr. Mayor, is a health care motion yeah. as listed. Sure, yeah, and I have a, a motion. I want to make sure that we, we, we stated this clearly at the last meeting, but I want to get, get it on, on the record. We've adopted the budget, and we've made it clear that we have to maintain our DDB, and we're going to um, shift to the 80-20 uh, split as well. I want to get and put that on the record, uh, but as relates to plan design, and I, I, I'm not sure where Mrs. Benjamin is, and she's in here somewhere. Um, she's probably behind the sign. Uh, uh, we got a lot of work to do on plan design, and uh, I know uh, Jacob and Vic, you guys are here, and I'm sure there are, uh, several others here who want to have some input in that, and we're getting a, a, a numerous, innumerable uh, um, uh, solicitations, people who have different ideas. It's going to be a process over Whatever the horizon is, hopefully a shorter one in which we can get everyone's input and see what we can do that's very best for our um, employees and for our retirees. But I wanted to get this um, uh, um, consistent with exactly what we said last meeting. I want to get on the record, okay? So um, I move that the city maintain the established defined dollar benefit contribution for pre and post 65 eligible retirees and their dependents uh, for the 2019 plan year and approve the recommended phased in premium adjustments for active employees resulting in a city sharing 80% and the active employees sharing 20% of the cost for health share, healthcare. Uh, these changes are effective on January 1st, 2019. Future plan design changes and premium adjustments may be necessary in order to maintain the 80-20 cost share. That is a motion. So, um, second. second. Move and second it. Discussion, and again, this is, this is consistent with exactly what we articulated last time. We just want to make sure it was on the record. All right, we'll move the previous question. Kirk Cotterell. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. And let's, this is, I know summers get tight and crazy, um, but um, Pam and Missy and everyone else who's tasked with this, let's, as methodically as possible, let's get all the stakeholders um, in a room, either the same room or different rooms, but let's work through this and, and uh, see if there are any other ideas that we have not considered that might um, endure to the benefit of our employees and retirees in, in a way that, um, that, that makes some sense, okay? Yes, All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And, and let, me, let me say real quick, uh, thank you guys, CFFA, for um, always being actively involved, constructively in the discussion. Jacob, Vic, who's the, who's the proper contact to make sure we have that communication? So, Jacob L., the, the, the president of CFFA, let's make sure we dialogue. Met with them, with them last week. All right. I know, I know. That. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, They're thank always. You always uh, share good information. I'm We're moving into a period of public hearing. Um, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I will read uh, item 27 and then uh, you can open that. Resolution number 2018-054 in support of the issuance by the South Carolina Jobs Economic Development Authority of its education facilities refunding revenue bonds Benedict College in one or more series taxable or tax exempt in the principal amount of not exceeding $25 million. Okay, and so this is on our agenda for a public hearing. Is there anyone to speak for or against resolution R-2018-054? Explain. Explain to people why we're doing this, because I've had several people ask. And okay. Yes, sir, would you like that on the record, Mr. Rickman? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Um, I'll do my best. I mean, the, the city really acts, it's not even as a pass through, it's more of a formality when um, I think Benedict College is, uh, they're not doing new pro projects is my understanding, but I guess they are refinancing. Is that right, Mr. Mr. Palin? Palin? Oh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jones, oh. how are you? Oh, hello, Ray. Why don't you help us out for your clients? Of course. <laughs> Evening, Council. And 
City staff, so um, this resolution is a support resolution that's required by JETA. And so what Benedict is doing is, of course, Benedict's under new leadership, Dr. Artis and her chief of staff, Dr. Sion Smith's here tonight. They're actually refinancing some debt. And so in order to do that, the JETA statute requires a resolution in support of the bond issuance be adopted uh, by the locality in which the college is located, which is why we're here tonight. Um, the city has no responsibility for these bonds. Uh, the city is taking a ministerial action tonight in connection with the bond issue. Thank you, Ray. Right. So again, is there anybody here to speak for or against? Seeing none, is there a motion? Who moves? Is there a second? Second. second. It's been probably moved in second. Um, Ms. Moore, would you call the roll? <coughs> Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Ms. Wilson? 28 is also for a public hearing. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, resolution number R2018057, public input on closing and transfer of an unopened portion of Stedham Avenue, otherwise known as Brook Avenue, containing approximately 0.13 acres in Richland County. And, and this is what Mr. Wright briefed us on. So this is uh, just a formality, is an unopened, unused portion of a small block um, in the northern part of the city. Is there anybody here to speak for or against R-2018-057? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move approval. It's been moved, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been probably moved and second. If the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. And Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I would ask Ms. Gloria Saeed, Director of Community Development, to come forward um, to do a brief presentation prior to you opening the public hearing for the fiscal year 2018-2019 Annual Action Plan for Community Development. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor Pro Tem, Good evening. Divine, and members of City Council, Ms. Wilson, uh, it's that time of year again that we present our uh, annual plan for approval to HUD. This is our uh, third plan under the current five-year con plan that was approved back in 2015. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Todd Watts, who is the chairman for the, city, uh, the Citizens Advisory Council. He's going to come forward and tell you a little bit about the process that they've gone through to uh, vet and approve the um, activities that we are proposing for the coming year. So I'll ask Mr. Watts to come forward. Thank you, Ms. Saeed. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Devine and distinguished members of council. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. I um, want to share with you the um, details of the fiscal year 2018-19 annual action plan. As many of you are already aware, the City of Columbia's Community Development Department has prepared the fiscal year 2018-19 draft annual action plan, which represents the fourth year of the city's 2015-2019 consolidated plan. The action plan is the City of Columbia's application, if you will, to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Entitlement Grants and identifies the proposed programs and projects that will be funded during the city's fiscal year of 2018. Working in collaboration with our partners, neighborhoods, and community stakeholders, the action plan identifies how the city proposes to utilize these funds to address its community development, housing, and public service priorities and goals as described in the executive summary. On page three of your uh, guide, you should have some recommendations for funding from CDBG activities and HOPRA program Act awards, which were ratified by the Citizens Advisory Committee formally on March 13, 2018. The three HUD entitlement grants are covered in the annual action plan, uh, those being CDBG, HOME, and HOPWA funds, and those expected resources are detailed on page 28 on your packets. The Community Development Block Grant, we, are, we have a total of $2,351,323 in CDBG revenue that's available for project activities, which represents roughly about an 8.1% increase. Out of that total, a little over $1 million, $1 million comes from new entitlement money. Another $199,650 comes from prior year entitlements. And then $650,000 comes from program and income um, from the revolving loan fund for the anticipated fiscal year. 
as well as $474,909 worth of previous year's program incomes. Um, the primary objective is the development of viable, is viable urban communities through the provision of decent, affordable housing, improved living environments, and the expansion of economic opportunity. Funds are intended to serve low and moderate income residents in areas, eliminate slum and bright, or eliminate imminent threats of health and safety due to, it, due to disasters. CDBG activities included in the fiscal year 2018 address community development priority needs addressed in the consolidated plan, and such projects include public services, acquisition, demolition, economic development, and affordable housing. A complete listing of those activities can be found starting with page 44. Uh, talk a little bit about the Home Investment Partnerships Program. This year we have $867,617 in revenue available for projects for this fiscal year. 617000 um, 617,000 comes from new entitlement money, whereas 250,000 comes from program income. And the home program is dedicated to increasing the availability as well as the access to affordable housing for low-income households. Activities include affordable, new, affordable housing loans, residential acquisition, rehab, and new construction, and other projects. And then finally, the last group of money that you're uh, looking at in front of you is the housing opportunities for persons with AIDS. Uh, in the amount of $1,406,384 for programs this coming fiscal year. HOPWA funds may be used for a wide range of housing, social services, program, planning, and development costs for the benefits of individuals living with HIV and AIDS and their families that reside within the Columbia Metropolitan Square area of Calhoun, Fairfield, Kershaw, Lexington, and Richland, and Saluda counties. Project sponsors being recommended include the Columbia Housing Authority, PALS, the Cooperative Ministries, Transitions, USC, Sakahachi, and USC uh, here. Citizens have had the opportunity to comment during the city's comment period, which began on April 12th of this year and was extended until June 20th of this year. Due to the delay in the HUD allocation notification, the city's annual action plan submission is delayed until next week on June 26th. And in addition to, net to tonight's public hearing, a public hearing was held on April 19th of this year at the Wood Forest Community Development and Education Center located at 3730 North Main Street, Suite D in Columbia. The, ac the action plan along with citizens' comments will be submitted to the Department of Housing and Urban Development prior to June 26th, and all public comments can still be submitted to the Community Development Department located at 1225 Lady Street, Suite 102 in Columbia, South Carolina. They can also be emailed to C-O-C-C-O-M-D-E-V-Compliance at ColumbiaSC.net, or they can be faxed, if we're still in the 20th century, to 803-255-8912. For more information, we always encourage folks to call the Community Development Department, which is located at, um, which can be reached at 803-545-3373. Before I... Um, uh, throw it back to council for the opening of the public hearing. I do also want to take a personal privilege and um, and thank you, Mayor Benjamin, for being here. It's always a pleasure to um, present this information to you, but I really want to uh, brag a little bit about our committee. Citizens Advisory Committee does a lot of work throughout the year. The funny thing is we can kind of compress it down to about four months because we're that efficient. Mm -hmm. um, but doing so, it, we couldn't be as efficient if it wasn't for the uh, contributions of six talented um, committee members, which include David Jackson, Marvin Heller, Trey Taylor, Ursula Polaris, Pat Brown, and Walter Skipper Marks. And then finally, we'd also, the committee would also like to extend its thanks to the fine members of the community development staff, specifically Ms. Gloria Saeed, Dolly Bristow, and Andalyn Rod Rodriguez, who work so closely with us. That is all I have to share with you today. I'll open it up to any questions you have, and we can begin the public hearing. All right. Fantastic. Um, uh, Ms. Devine, and is this a public hearing or an amendment? Oh, public hearing. Both, OK. All right. Ms. Devine. Uh, well, first, I would like to thank okay. uh, Mr. Watts and the, and the committee. But Mr. Watts, you've been doing this for a long time. and. We appreciate um, your work on this. Um, and then the second thing I just wanted to, because I know you said a lot, so I want to just reiterate, make sure it was on the record that um, for 2018-19, um, the City Council re is reaffirming um, our priority areas, targeted redevelopment areas, Book of Washington Heights, King Lion Street, Farrell Road, Business Corridor, and Edisto Court redevelopment. I just want to make sure that was 
reiterated. All right. Fantastic. All right. Um, any other comments? Anyone here to speak in favor of or against uh, our annual action plan? All right. Thank you, Ty. And thanks not just for this, but all the work you always do to keep us on the national stage. Appreciate it, bro. All right. Yes, sir. Thank Lori, you, Ty. Lori, did you have something to say as well? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have a, a motion, I think. Uh, I assume. Is that, do we, so do we move on the annual action plan or do we, Sorry. that's 30, right? Uh, no, sir, that's a separate separately? item. Separately? A separate All right, item. is there a motion? So moved. Um, second. Moved and probably second. Any discussion? With the previous question, clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Um, under other matters, Mr. Mayor, item 30 is a separate item, a community development block grant substantial amendment for the 2017 annual action plan, and Ms. Saeed will also present information on that amendment. All right, yes. Ms. Um, good evening again. Evening again. Um, as you all know, uh, we have uh, had some challenges with the current year's action plan in terms of uh, the uh, approval and when we were actually funded and getting a lot of our uh, programs up and going. Um, so consequently, uh, we are requesting that uh, council approves a substantial amendment of this fiscal year 17 action plan. And that approval will include three items. We're asking that you uh, approve us expanding from the current four areas that you just mentioned, Councilwoman Divine, to uh, expand the four prioritized areas to redevelopment areas to the citywide uh, areas that we can do uh, projects in. And also we're asking that you waive the requirement for our standardized NOFA process due to time constraints in order for us to meet our timeliness uh, demands that have been placed on us by HUD. And we're also asking that you approve us transferring funding from our CDBG program income revolving loan fund to the CDBG regular entitlement pot. And that's so that we can use those dollars for other activities other than uh, housing. In your folder, you also have some specific information uh, about the request that we have before you for the substantial amendment. And it actually outlines how, where we're moving uh, money from, what we've had to deobligate uh, from uh, certain areas uh, or certain projects um, to new projects in order for us to get this money spent in a timely manner. All right. Is there um, anyone, is there a motion? First so one. moved. A second. Second. Some discussion. With the previous question, Clerk Carterell. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Wait a second. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. At this time, we will move into a period of ordinances. First reading, item 33, ordinance number 2018-010 to Xnet Systems, Inc. and successors and assigns the right, power, and authority to construct, install, maintain, and operate. Motion. So moved. A second. Second. Any discussion? We'll move the previous question. Clerk, call a roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 34, ordinance number 2018-031 to MCI Metro Access Transmission Services Corp. Its successors and assigns the right power and authority. Approval is a second. So second. moved. Any discussion? With the previous question, Kirk, call a roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 35, ordinance number 2018-029, amending ordinance 2015-034, granting an encroachment to the University of South Carolina for the use of the right-of-way areas of the 1100 Second. blocks. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. The clerk call the roll. Thank you. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. 
Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 36, ordinance number 2018-033, granting an encroachment to Jeremy Long for installation and maintenance of a landscaping and a concrete walkway within the right-of-way area of the 2700 block of motion. Wilmot Avenue. Is there a move? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. The clerk call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Moving into a period of resolutions, item 37, resolution number R2018052, authorizing the city manager to execute a lease between the City of Columbia and TN Development Corporation for the lease of approximately 13 acres. Moves. Ms. McDowell has a motion, seconded by Mr. Rickerman. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. I'm Clark Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 38, resolution number R2018055, authorizing acceptance and dedication of streets known as a portion of Allen's Mill Drive, Beardmore Court, Calabash Lane, Peppercorn Lane, and a portion of Sorrel Tree Drive in Allen's Mill Subdivision, Phase yeah, 1. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 39, resolution number R2018056, authorizing acceptance and dedication of portions of streets known as Allen's Mill Drive and Sorrel Tree Drive in Allen's Mill Subdivision, move Phase 2. A second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 40, resolution number R2018061, authorizing the city manager to execute a professional services agreement between the City of Columbia and the United Way of the Midlands for the Regional Coordination of Homeless Services in the Midlands for FY 2018-2019. So move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 41, resolution number R2018062, authorizing the city manager to execute a professional services contract for the Housing First program between the City of Columbia and the University of South Carolina. A motion. So move. Move approval. Moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 42, resolution number R2018065, authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement between the City of Columbia and the Midlands Housing Alliance, Inc. for so 2025. Second. Second. In discussion. Seeing none, I'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 43, resolution number R2018066, authorizing the city manager to execute an inclement weather center agreement between the City of Columbia and the United Way of the Midlands for the operation of the inclement weather center. Move approval. Second. Is there a second? Second. Move, move, uh, any discussion? Seeing none, move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Madam City Manager, let's make sure we have um, hard copies and electronic copies of all the presentations from earlier today. We had some great presentations from our partners for delivering um, frontline services to the homeless. She had some concerns uh, that um, uh, council and our staff and our other partners have about making sure we step up our effort uh, with some of our folks who are chronically homeless, particularly um, several who may be dealing with some mental health uh, issues and just making sure we redouble our efforts in a in a thoughtful and compassionate way. Um, so just want to make sure those are those those uh, presentations are yes, made available uh, yes. broadly. Thank you. All right, appointments. The first is uh, item 44. Out Council is asked to approve the appointment of two individuals to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Now, Ms. Belton is here. If uh, you need any assistance, well, I need to get some suggest? candidates. I like well, I like Jenna Stevens. Jenna. I like Jenna Stevens. I like to move the approval of Jenna Stevens for the Board of Zoning Appeals. I have a District 4 seat. This we'll hold on to that we'll one. Hold we'll hold let's, on let's, move, so move one let's move the appointment we'll of Jenna Stevens and hold, hold the other one. Um, Mr. Rickman will source some candidates for District 4. All right. Uh, is, there, uh, is there a second? Um, 
a motion, we'll move it by Ms. I mean, as a motion second. A motion by Ms. Devine, I'll second that motion. Move the approval of uh, appointment of Jenna Stevens to the um, BOZA. Will the previous question, Clerk call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Devine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Aye. Oh, are we not going to adopt the second one? Uh, Mr. Rickerman would like to see. Oh, but Daniel said he wanted to uh, uh, Shanique, what, what does the, uh, the breakdown of the BOZA look like? Yeah. Ms. Mr. Davis wants, wants that vacancy in District 1. Mr. Mr. Rickerman, y'all can talk about that. Uh, he wants to put a Clemson guy in there. So. District well, District 4, my guy can't serve. So. Yes, okay, I know he can't serve, but. District 1 has one, District 2, one, District 3. So we do, have, we do have representation in all four districts right now. We do. Okay. Yes. These are not district specific seats. No, no, they're not. They're not. They're yeah, not. but we want to make sure that we have citywide representation. Yeah. Exactly. Geographic oh. distribution. I'd like you, to if move if you, approval if you, of George Schaefer. All right. For what? The other, the other slot. There's only one other slot. There's two slots. There's two there's spots. Only two slots available at this time. One slot. Well, one. Yeah, we have one slot left. I'd like to move to approval of George Schaefer. Who's the current District 4 rep? Do you know? Is that, is that, That's Cal, Cal is the only District 4 rep? Right. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And he's coming off, so. Yeah, he's, so, you, so you need, you need a District 4 rep. Yep. You would have that. No, but she was saying that there was. The you said there were two from District 4 yeah. and one said, coming off. Will you take the next one, uh, Daniel? Let's see. <laughs> Who else is? Oh. About this. Um, Charles Sally. Chuck is will, uh, coming off? No. No, he's the one, and he he's represents. In District and he's District well, 4. He is on there. He is oh, so, in oh, so, okay. so right now. District. That's not on my list. No, the no, list they, that you she, have. She doesn't have an incumbents on there at, no. at all. So, so Chuck, Chuck's still there. He is. Okay. And so for future, um, Shanique, when we do the appointments, if you could give us like the current ones as well, and then that way we can always see the makeup when we're trying to figure out who would be we okay. good. Okay. Daniel, you, yeah. you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, Thank all right. Um, so Mr. Uh, Duval and Mr. Uh, Davis have, have nominated Mr. Schaefer. Um, yes. All right, um, um, moved by him and seconded by him. Uh, okay. any, uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, um, we'll move the nomination of Mr. Schaefer for BOZA. Move the previous move question. Here. Move the previous question. Okay. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. We have uh, DDRC next. We have three great applicants for three slots. They fit right into them, two reappointments, and, um, and Mr. Young. Mr. Young is, is, is a new appointee. Or he, had he served previously, or did he serve at he DDRC? Served on a different board. A different board, okay. Um, but the, uh, the code requires one individual from uh, as a realtor, and two, one serving as an architect, and the other as a community representative. So I'd move forward the uh, names of Paul Balknight, Tom Savory, and Preston Young. Uh, second. Is it moved and second? Yeah. Any discussion? Balknight is yeah, community. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Any Balk discussion? Balknight is the incumbent. <laughs> yeah, so the, and, and so recognizing Mr. Balknight and Mr. Savory will be uh, serving as second terms, and Mr. Young his initial term. Um, with the previous question, uh, as a motion, there was a second somewhere, right? Yeah, a second, second here. Second. With the previous question, I'm sorry. I, think, uh, I thought I thought so too. It was one of the boards. I'm not sure which. Uh, There's no district two rep on there, is there? Uh, one and three. Yeah. Yeah. All I yeah, see is one. is one and three and one and four. And he's four. Yeah, Bob Wynn serving out of district two. Who's in Currently two? Currently serving. Who is that? Again, Bob Shadid. Wynn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So three has three, one has three, and two and four have one. That's not representative of the city. Well, the challenge is well, the challenge is, they the, is that. that we have geographic representation, but we also have um, subject matter expertise requirements as well. well so we got, um, can we? I think Preston Young isn't he in District Four? Doesn't he? He is. Yeah, he he's lives four. in District Preston's Four. Preston's in my neighborhood. 
I'm one of your constituents, Daniel. Can we defer that until? Yeah, your wife calls me to get things done. Can we do this? <laughs> did not sound right. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. That didn't, that didn't come out right. I know, it didn't come out. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Could we, do, could we defer DDRC appointments until next time? So that we can uh, get adequate representation on all do throughout the, the district. Do the two reappointments and, and save the third one? Yes, sir. All right. Can we do that? So, is, that so, what, is that what happens? Is that, going, is no that district two appointment on here? Is that what happens? Uh, is, that, is that what's going? <laughs> where are we? Where are we now with the uh, district reps? Do who, else, who else do we have on the on? Your your current makeup is three two. You have three in District 1. You have one in District 2. Who's your District 2 rep? Who's he? Bob Wynn okay. is District 2. Mm. In District 3, you have four representations. I mean, I'm saying four because Ryan Heiler is vacant, so that is a district okay. seat. In district 4? District 4, you only have one. Tell us again, because remember, DDRC again is, is also occupation and subject matter specific. Yes. So if you go, if you move forward with the two reappointments, the two reappointments are filling which, which They are seat? filling the architect, architect and community, and rep. community, and community rep. rep. So the only one available is, is, the, realtor. is the realtor. Correct. And so. <clears throat> yeah. You can hold it if you choose and to. And district, <clears throat> and district four is currently, who's the uh, one person in district four? Who's that? Harris Cohn. Harris Cohn. Right. He's a real estate. So that a puts two real estate. He's not real, he's not real estate. Well, that puts well, he's three. He's a contractor. Developer. He's a developer. But, uh, but uh, Preston Young is realtor. realtor. And he's in District 4. Yeah, so if you, I mean, how do you want to do it? I think Preston's an excellent appointment. He served on our land use boards before. I'm trying to remember which board he served on in the past. But if you want, if we, I think we should move forward Ed, with, the, with the two reappointments. They're, they're both stellar appointees. You know, Paul Knight, Mark Knight is. All right, a past president of Cotton Town. I was then. And Mr. Savory, Tom, Tom's um, actually just um, inducted into the uh, um, AIA Fellows. So he's, he's, uh, he's one of the best architects in the country right now. Uh, so um, if you want to hold on District 4, I'm fine. If you want to move forward, I'm, I'm fine as well. Whatever you want to do. But I think well, we can hold it. It's just, well, y'all got to decide if it's going to be 4 or 2, and just know that it has to be a realtor. Well, I mean, to be honest, yes. I, I think it would be beneficial to have somebody from two since the majority yes. of the issues that come forward are in the central city. Well, let, let's move then forward. We let's move forward. Let's move forward with the two time. reappointments. Y'all okay. talk about okay. about the others. I, I think Preston's an excellent appointee, but, but, if, but if, if geographical considerations that'd be, that'd be or something y'all can figure out, y'all figure out between now and then. Just making sure that everybody's in concluded. Move, move the uh, advancement of Mr. Bach Knight and Mr. Savory. All right. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. This, thank you, Shanique. All right. Um, any items taken up in work session that require um, our consideration, Madam City Manager? Um, any. Any, um, I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Devine? Well, I was going to say that we did discuss um, in executive session the speed humps on Waccamaw, and I know that we have several people here to speak to address council on that. Oh, absolutely. And we have, um, yes, we have at least uh, four or five people who signed up to speak. So I can start going on the list, but, but there are no community reports or referrals, are there? All right. All right, seeing none, I'll go in order of those who have signed up. Um, Ms. Sarah Schreibel? Schreibel? If I. Hey Sarah, if I if I if I um, destroyed your last name, you can correct me, okay? Fine, thank you. Good evening. Um, yes, I um, wanted to address the issue. I I know that this was previously discussed at length and voted upon in in city council. So I'm a little bit confused about why the item is. Um, up for discussion again, but uh, I want to speak briefly about the situation on Wakama Avenue. Um, Wakama is a street um, uh, that houses AC Moore Elementary School. It's uh, situated between Edisto Avenue and Hardin Street. Right now, Edisto Avenue has speed bumps and Hardin Street has a uh, traffic light. And so we are seeing a, a large uptick in 
very high speed traffic. Um, as I know council members are aware, there was a traffic study completed um, within a year ago showing alarming speeds over 60 miles an hour on a 25 mile an hour road that also contains an elementary school. There are sidewalks on part of the street, but not on all. Um, there are a number of families who live on the street with small children, um, a number of um, children in the neighborhood who walk to and from school um, on that street. Um, again, there's high speed traffic has been um, uh, marked um, in the traffic study both in the afternoon when children are walking to and from school and late late at night when many of the college age students who live on our street are walking to and from uh, five points. As a resident of the street, I'm deeply concerned that there's going to be a tragic accident if we don't take uh, definitive action to slow down the speed of traffic. Thank you for your consideration of the issue. Yes. Sarah, say your last name for the record. Schwabel. Schwabel, okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, um, Mr. Timothy Stewart. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I've been living on Waccamaw for about 24 years now as a homeowner there. Sarah took almost everything that I had planned to say. Uh, there is one thing, for the first 10 or so years that we were there, the situation continued to get worse with traffic, with students, with St. Patrick's Day. The last 10 years, things have improved a good bit, thanks to the city, thanks to USC, thanks to the Wells Garden Neighborhood Association, thanks to our, our street representative. But there is still a real issue with cars going through there too fast. There are small children, the sidewalks are only part way, and the ones at the up, upper end but directly onto the street. There's no, no green space there at all. Mm -hmm. So I believe it would, it's a very dangerous situation and lots of cars have been hit in that area. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the speed humps would do a marvelous job of slowing things down. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Judy Halliday. Hi, I'm Judy Holliday and I live on Waccamaw and have for 32 years. I'm the um, street representative and have been for 17. I'd had no idea this was going on on Waccamaw. We um, had the 2017 meeting of the uh, Waccamaw Neighborhood Association, Wales Garden, uh, Neighborhood Association, and one of the ladies stood up and said that she had had a traffic report done, and she told, for the first time we heard about all this speeding on Waccamaw Avenue, and since the discussion got busy and there had already been a two-hour meeting, one of the neighbors stood up and said, let's postpone this, and why don't you go back with your street on Waccamaw, get a consensus, and bring it back to the neighborhood board. And then we will look at your plan and see if we want to recommend to the city or not whether there should be speed bumps. And that's the last I knew for a year. Then I saw that there was a an announcement that there were four speed bumps to go in on Waccamaw Avenue in March of 2018. And come to find out, when I called Mr. Duvall, um, he looked it up for me and said that there had been a proposal and that it was on the agenda and that um, if I need, and I tried to talk to the city manager, but she was on leave, so I talked to Jeff Palin, and he gave me Mr. Brewer's number, and he is the traffic engineer, so I asked him to explain to me how this got on the agenda without my knowledge, and <clears throat> he said that um, um, Sarah Schwebel had represented herself as a representative of our neighborhood association and had said that 
approval had been given for speed bumps to be examined and for the test to be done. So I told him that was not true. And I um, called Mr. Duvall back and he verified with the Neighborhood Association that that had not occurred, approval had not occurred. So it was taken from the agenda. Then we had a neighborhood election because we have a neighborhood, I mean we have a, yes, Wales Garden Neighborhood Association annual meeting. And at that annual meeting, no representatives came talking about speed bumps. So nothing was said. There was an election. And come to find out, without my knowledge, there had been a reassignment of the speed bump project on the agenda for a city council. And I went, does that mean I have to stop? Yes, yes ma'am. I mean, three minutes up. You can finish, finish it. OK. And so I feel, I, I know that there is supposed to be consensus. That's what the traffic um, engineering protocol is. And right now, I feel divided. And apparently, there was a petition of the 11 people on our street. One said, no, we were, we were completely excluded from this process. And so there was no discussion, in my opinion. And then one lady who's elderly was left out. But we have a small amount of, we have about 11 owner-occupied residents on Waccamaw, and the rest are rentals. And we've made great improvements. Ms. Schwebel and I have worked with parking and gotten limited parking for our street, which has made a wonderful uh, improvement. And so I'm very disappointed in, in the fact that we cannot have consensus. And I, I feel bad on the street that we're going to have to go over these four humps when we haven't even seen, we just now saw the pictures of them, and we didn't know that it was coming. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Holliday. And Mr. Mayor, can I, can yes. I just address a yeah. couple things? I want to make sure that it's clear, Ms. Holliday. Ms. Schwebel never um, indicated that she represented the neighborhood. She and several moms who live on the street came. They actually contacted me as, as one of their at-large representatives with the, the concern and that, and I think, and Sarah, I hope that you all can talk. It sounds like in the past y'all have worked together, so hopefully y'all can talk. But she has provided information on the petition, um, we do have the traffic study that our staff has done. Well, I have no idea who's on the petition. Uh, well, so how do you yeah. know that those are the residents? Well, but still, as a resident of that, she contacted us, and this council heard the concerns. Mr. Duvall did but that tell. that is not the protocol, Ms. Devine. Well, as a representative. That is not the protocol of this traffic engineering department. Okay, Ms. Holliday, I don't want to argue with you. As a representative of the, the, the community, any person, whether they're a member of the Neighborhood Association or not, has a right to contact any of their elected members and bring it forward to this council. And so that is what was done. But, you know, but do you know who told me that she represented herself to him as a neighborhood representative? Was David Brewer. Okay. Well, I'm telling you, and it's on the record, what she represented here in front of this council was that she was a resident of Waccabal. So it she was- She is a resident. Okay, and that's what she represented. So I, I just want to clear that she, she did not misrepresent is, herself. But she was not the neighborhood representative. That's not what she told us. That's not what she told us. So I, I don't want to argue with you. I just want to make sure I'm talking that about it's the clear. Association. I understand that. Now, I, what I'm telling you is that what she represented to this council, when a majority of this council voted for the speed hump, was not that she represented the neighborhood. She actually very clearly said that the neighborhood association had not taken a position, that it was on the 2017 agenda, that it wasn't voted on, and that it was supposed to come back, and it was not on the new agenda. So she was very clear. Um, regardless of how we got here, I think that it is important that you guys talk for our, from my standpoint, and I can only speak for myself, I'm concerned that you've got elementary school students walking down there and independent of anybody who lives in the neighborhood, our city staff has looked at it and said that people speed 60 miles an hour down that road. So that is a concern. 
That we is have a, not we have not had a chance to hear the traffic report, but when I asked so Mr. Mr. Brewer, Brewer about you, it, he said that it was moderate traffic and it was five miles over 30 miles an hour and 90% was five miles over and 5% was five miles seen under the, 30 miles Well, And hour. that's what I was gonna say. I, if she's not seen it, then David, I would suggest that you share it with them. But our staff recommended and well, David, is he still here? I watched the video on YouTube because I, I was unaware of what happened on March 20th, and I saw that Mr. Duvall said to Mr. Brewer, did you get neighborhood approval from Wales Garden? And he said no. Correct. And Mr. Duvall said, I recommend that we postpone this until we find out more about it. And you said no. I think they can't have a meeting for another year and they don't have to wait a year. We're going to have it right now. And you voted right then. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and we all, and four Mr. members, support and four members supported that. Pardon? Yes, ma'am. We support that vote. I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah. yeah but but how, how about this? We're not, we're actually not taking up an item right now. This is community input. Mr. Adams uh, has the microphone now. Frank, uh, please. I think you signed up to speak. And if anyone else wants to speak on this issue, you, have a, you can um, certainly sign up. Um, and just make sure you speak. Good evening. Names for the record. Good evening. Everybody evening. smile, okay? Let's have a little, take a deep breath. <laughs> I'm Frank Adams, a longtime resident of Wells Garden. And, and thank you, Ms. Holliday. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm a past uh, officer in our Wells Garden Neighborhood Association. I'm a taxpayer, a voter. A, you know, I support the city financially and otherwise. I'm here tonight to, um, let's diffuse this, okay? I think what we gotta do, I, I had an office for years in the State House and some, some of, the, uh, of the, that expertise has rubbed off on me. Sometimes when you get a situation like this, you really need to kick back and look for a win-win. And I'd like to say, hey, what's the hurry here? We got time for the Neighborhood Association to meet, hear these people out, maybe even receive a copy of the, the city's work with the traffic engineering, which has never been provided. And if we just take 30, 90 days to wait, we can still do this before school starts. But here's the thing. The big issue is why are we concerned about children in the street? And I'll tell you why, because the sidewalks are impassable. Maybe we're looking at the, we're, we're all frustrated, but looking at wrong parts of the problem, right? But there are areas of, of Waccamaw in our neighborhood which are covered with dirt that is eroded from yards, that has been there, that even have shrubs growing out of them. There's parts that are broken. Um, this is a new thing going on in our neighborhood where we are having children again. We have three sets of baby, uh, scooters right now on Edisto, that's, that's a first. So I'm, we're starting to talk to people, hey, we gotta fix these sidewalks. Mothers should not have their children in the street except to cross from one point to another. If you're using the street to take your children to school, it's primarily, I would think, because the sidewalks are impassable. Sidewalks are for walking, streets are for driving. Maybe we need, can we take a few weeks? Um, this whole process, I'm asking you to follow your process. The process was a win-win for city council. The neighborhood associations always had to fight it out and all we had to do was send you something for y'all to ratify. You didn't pick a winner, you didn't pick a loser, you just signed on to what we had worked out. Mm -hmm. It may be we may not be able to work something out. It may be, may be that we can. Edisto does have speed bumps. It took us six months of hard wrangling and, and going door to door and talking to each other and, and well, politicking. Y'all ever heard of that? <laughs> um, so I'm asking you today, let's, what's the hurry? We need time to communicate. That's not going on. And I guarantee you, we can have a neighborhood meeting to address this. All it takes is 20 signatures. We've had three meetings in the last year, counting the two annual meetings and one in December. So we do meet, 
And I guarantee you, I'll be the first to, to sign a petition as soon as we get these issues resolved. But you've got to have more than a he said, she said, more than, I mean, let's have some black and white and let's have some numbers and some, some of the city expertise maybe can be brought to bear. I'd be glad to work with anybody your city manager wants to uh, sign to me or ask uh, or forces her staff to work with me, Mr. Mayor. But the, we, can, we can identify some issues and maybe we can solve this problem. It won't be a problem. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Thank you. Sir? Thank you, Mayor, member of the commission, uh, council. My name is Michael Anselmo. I'm the current president of the Wales Garden Neighborhood Association. I took office in May, uh, March of 2018. Michael, it's A N S L E M A N A A N A N Z E L M O. Good right. Italian name. All right. Good deal. Um, Thank you. As I've learned, and as the council is aware, this is a divided issue in our neighborhood. Um, I echo Frank's uh, uh, thought to bring some uh, reflection and thought in our neighborhood to this. Uh, the city intentionally put together the plan, the traffic control plan, that requires neighborhood association involvement, have the plan come to us, have it have a consensus, then we come back with a recommendation to avoid this exact type of situation we're dealing with right now. And as president, I have the ability with my board to call a neighborhood meeting anytime we need to. I will pledge to this council, we'll have one within 30 days, we'll invite members of the city, we'll look at the traffic study and come back with a recommendation for you, other than having to pursue it in another avenue perhaps that nobody really wants to go down because frankly the policies, our policies weren't file, followed nor were the city's policies followed at this time. I can pledge we will look at it and be back to you within 30 days with an answer. Um, I think that is probably the preferred course of action for everybody. It would help alleviate some tensions in my organization and it will allow us all to really understand the facts, to review the report. I've glanced at it. Obviously, there are some incidents of high rates of speed. There are, but the vast majority of them are, in fact, within five miles an hour of the speed limit either way. I think if our neighborhood had the ability to talk through this, we could come to you with a reason plan and allow this issue to be taken off your plate. That's Thanks. all we ask. Thanks, Mr. Anselmo. Sure. And so is, have, have you guys seen the traffic study or not seen the traffic study? I saw it today yeah. for the first time. You saw it today, okay. So, so it is in the public domain. If not, let's, I mean, so let's, let's make sure it is. Uh, and, um, Thank you, Mr. Sure. Anselmo. Make sure you have your contact information as well. All right. Thank you. Anyone else yes. want to speak on this issue? Although it's just this is community input, obviously. So I want to kind of restate for the record that there is no item on the agenda tonight here. But please. Hi. Uh, my name is Andrew Gretak. Uh, I'm a resident uh, at, uh, on Waccamaw Ave. Uh, I wanted to say first, uh, I'm, I was one of the people who helped go door to door and collect signatures in support of the speed pumps. Uh, we have a considerable representation from owners on the street. Uh, my children uh, use the street. I have three young boys. Uh, they, uh, they may use the sidewalks, but also uh, they uh, would like to bike around, uh, at least until they're 15. Uh, and uh, when biking, they use the street. So that the, and I bike, and I use the street, and I, the uh, you know, speed that people drive there uh, is frequently unsafe. It's not the most cars, it's the, it's the dangerous cars that cause the problem. Also, uh, one of the speed bumps has actually already been installed. It's in front of my house. Uh, it's really very mild. Uh, it, does not, I don't, it could not possibly in, impede emergency vehicles. I don't hear suspension creaking in the night when people go over it. Uh, so I think that the, the plan just seems to, to work. Uh, so I, I speak in, in support of this, and also uh, I'm Rachel yeah. Edwards. I live next yes. to Mr. Gretak. Come to the mic, please. Come, Rachel. Ms. Edwards, would you oh, come sorry. to the microphone? The speed bump is in front of my house, and I love it. I have a two and a half year old, and although I don't let him play in the street, if you know toddlers, you know their movements are unpredictable, and um, the speed bump has slowed down traffic significantly. And I feel like my child is safer, and I thank you for voting on it and making it go in quickly because the summertime is when kids play outside on the street. That's when it's going to happen if it's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I, I appreciate the efforts of the Wells Garden Neighborhood Association uh, in improving the neighborhood. Uh, however, the uh, announcements of the 
you know, meetings uh, are not always comprehensive. Uh, there's times that go by where you know, I don't receive a notification uh, and new uh, owners on the, uh, on the street don't necessarily receive those as well. So I think if it's gonna be, uh, uh, act, if it's gonna be uh, describing itself as speaking and in, in, uh, in, in is representing the, the, uh, the owners on the street, it needs to be more proactive in getting that representation. I think we all have the, uh, the privilege uh, and right to uh, talk to our city council members. So thank you very much for your work. Thank on you. This. Thank you, Mr. Greytack, Ms. Edwards. Will, you, will both of you please sign on sign on to the list so we'll have your contact information. Yes, ma'am. We're going to uh, wrap this up. I think Sarah wanted one more um, very quickly so we can, we can wrap this part up. Um, Thank you again to, to council and everyone in the room who is <laughs> patiently waiting for this conversation. Just really, I, I, I want to explain one other piece. Um, the Neighborhood Association uh, meeting uh, was 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 highly complicated on um, the initial meeting um, the issue was brought up there was uh, support there was an objection raised and um, the neighborhood street residents were told to go back and and address the problem uh, discussing and 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 um, uh, work towards consensus and so uh, the the route um, going working directly with council representatives actually enabled us to move forward towards Towards a vote. Um, there was more than a year's work to move towards this vote, speaking back to Frank Adams' comments about, about Edisto. And the minutes for the, the, uh, the requirements for the Wales Garden uh, require that the meeting be held at a certain time each year. It's actually written into the board minutes and it is scheduled during the spring break uh, flanking, it, sorry, it's scheduled during the, sun, the um, weekend flanking USD spring break. So most of the owner-occupied residents living on Wacom Avenue are employed by USC and are out of town during the one meeting a year that um, so, is held. Sarah, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but Not at all. I, I think we, we, we don't, however we got here, we just probably need to put some of that aside. Um, your, your president has committed to have a meeting within the next 30 days. Everyone who is here, you all need to exchange information. Um, and if maybe also those of you who went door to door in Waccamaw can make sure that the meeting, um, that there's representatives at that meeting. Um, if we can also um, make sure that um, it is set at a time that is, is reasonable for people to be there. It is summer and people do vacations and we know we can't plan around everybody, but it's important that we get this, this issue resolved. Um, I do wanna say, and I, as I just shared with um, uh, Mr. Duvall, um, and I've been here long enough to see it that even when there are neighborhoods that are split and it, things come up, ultimately the decision to put or not put speed humps is up to council. It does not, I mean, we don't have to have the neighborhood, although we put it in a policy and we put that policy to have this consensus and have people discussing, but it doesn't say that we cannot vote for speed humps if a neighborhood is against it and vice versa, especially if our professional staff recommends something. So I, I want people to be clear on that. Um, but what I would like to do is when you guys have the meeting, if you can make sure that Mr. Duvall and I, at least the two of us know so that we can be present if our schedules permit, um, David Brewer will be there and we'll make sure that we have um, the information. Are you, um, what, you wanna be there too? No, no, oh. no, no. <laughs> And make sure we all know. I don't need that but, speed. Um, but you know, I, 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 this council, and I just want, it just has to be clear, this council knew that there was, there was some people in the neighborhood did, who did not want the speed humps. And we heard the information. We clearly did not get any misrepresentation about who was representing the neighborhood association. We heard from residents of that, uh, of that street. And a majority of this council felt we needed to move forward. But we do want to encourage you guys to work together. So we'll give you guys that 30 days. Um, you have our promise that after the meeting, and if you have the meeting within two weeks, we can still move forward quickly after that. But we'll move forward one way or another quickly after that, but we would ask that you guys go back and, and have that discussion. I greatly appreciate that. Um, I think it's important for us to have conversation and, and also um, and recognize that you know the, the city traffic engineer saw the results of the traffic study and recommended some traffic coming 
measures as being essential. Um, I just, I want to reiterate again how concerned I am about the safety of those walking and using the street. I am too, we, we are too, and we'll, we'll have that addressed, um, but we want to make sure everybody has some input. Absolutely, thank you again. So, um, thank you. Frank, did you, did you want to say something else? Ms. Downsamo says you don't want to say anything else. Oh, Ms. Downsamo says Mr. Adams doesn't want to say anything else, and I, I'll, I'm going to trust Ms. Downsamo on, on this one. Uh, but please, you, you guys, obviously, we're your representatives. Feel free to, to dialogue with us and share your thoughts with us. Uh, my understanding is that it is a sense of counsel that you all, Ms. Downsamo, per your uh, comments, uh, you will um, uh, broadly make sure every voice is heard. Uh, at a meeting in which even those who may not routinely receive communications are um, are included, I think it probably is also want to be very clear that the council has made its its decision. If in fact we choose to reverse that decision, uh, that's going to be based on conversations that, that you all have between now and then. I understand our, our staff will probably cease and desist until we hear back. Um, um, but the plan is to still move forward with the speed humps unless you all come back to us with some other type of a, of a, of a, of a, of a of decision that helps inform us in a, in, a, in a different in a different way. So, who will notify us of the meeting? Uh, we're going to rely on Mr. Anselmo and Ms. 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 Swable and others. I think I, I don't think there'll be any um, any shortage of, of communiques. Um, I, I would strongly encourage, however, that while we are your elected representatives, should I send them to you? Uh, I, I think I think the communications should probably be centralized. Uh, and go straight to the city manager or whoever you're designated. You have a preferred designee. I've shared Mr. Anselmo's information Anselmo. with our public works director, Robert Anderson. My guess is that, my guess is that there are a whole lot of well-meaning but differing opinions right here. So because should I assumed that he would be well, just who, charged with setting the meeting. But my, but my, but my guess is that not just the meeting. I'm saying any other. My guess, it, it's going to be so important. You guys are feel, feel free to take copies of names and email addresses here. We gotta make sure everyone is, is, is contacted and has an opportunity to have their voices heard. So if you have communication, should they email you or Robert? Robert. I figured you say Robert. <laughs> R.A. Anderson at ColumbiaSC.net. Mr. 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 Anderson, for those who may be listening and unable to attend, R.A. Anderson at ColumbiaSC.net. If you have a position on the speed humps on Waccamaw, um, in Wells Garden, please uh, share those thoughts with him. Um, please make sure our staff, um, Mr. Bruin, Ms. Mr. Anderson, um, are fully involved in whatever this meeting is. Let's make sure that the document, the traffic study, is, um, is in the public domain as it is public information. And we're done with that one uh, yes. for, right, for right now. Oh, I thought we were. M M Mr. McDowell. Mr. Mayor. If the 30 day, if after 30 days there has been not a reasonable conclusion to this situation, does that simply mean that the decision that has been made by council stands? My, my sense, oh, um, my sense is it's 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 um, it's at our attention. So, um, Madam City Manager, you just need to report back to us exactly where things are, and we'll take it from there. Okay. All right. All right. As opposed to some type of a silent trigger. All right. Thank you all. All right. Um, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Ursula Polaris. Uh, Ms. Regina E. Williams. Hey, Regina. Hello, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Last night, I had the unfortunate opportunity to assist in locating the next of kin for a community resident and a former educator, a quiet woman who minded her own business. After locating her brother to see a six foot four man rock to his knees because his only sibling was now in a body bag, This was very unsettling. He kept. I can't understand what you're saying. He didn't hear the last sentence you said. 
this was very this was very unsettling he kept saying that he kept trying to tell his sister to move from that neighborhood because it was becoming dangerous but she loved where she lived she loved the house that she lived in her father was an artisan who helped to hand lay the stones that created the house. This was the fourth suspicious fire in four weeks in the Booker Washington Heights neighborhood. The difference is this last suspicious fire had a death attached to it. I don't know who's benefiting from these fires. I know that once the fire occurs, the houses are raised and you have the land. I don't know. What I do know is that I'd like to request a lighting study for our neighborhood. And before I go any further, I have Mr. Reginald Garrett with me from the neighborhood and his family has been in our neighborhood for 45 years. So, um, and we are getting ready to work with Dr. Donaldson this coming Thursday regarding the historic preservation of the neighborhood. Did you know at one time we had our own council, our own mayor, and we want this to stay a part of our history, but we are positioned to be on the positive side of change. So to help us, we'd like a lighting study. We would also like cameras, a camera study, not just on the exterior along the Beltline and Farrell Road corridor, but on the interior. Someone is moving in the darkness of our neighborhood and we need help. If you could do this for us, we would be forever grateful. Another thing that would help us is to come through and board up the houses that are not boarded, the ones that you're trying to reach, the families, the absentee landlords, the houses remain unboarded, therefore remaining a nuisance or a possible nuisance. If you could help us with that, we would appreciate that also. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. And Regina, I would say, and I shared this with the city manager, um, Mr. Davis, earlier about Sara Willingham. That's a huge yes. loss to our community. And, huge um, loss, yes. And we will certainly, you know, law enforcement, fire department will, will be looking into everything surrounding that. I was out there last night from the time they called until they roped it off to escalate the um, importance of it. So we're very thankful for the work that the City of Columbia Fire Department did, the uh, Police Department, we're just very thankful. Thank you, Regina. Thank you so much. All right, um, no one else is signed to speak. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Is there a second? Second. second. All right, with the previous question, Kirk Collarell. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Fine. Oh, I. Sorry. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Have a good evening. Thank you all so much.